Hey everyone, this is Christian and today we're taking a look at two of my most favorite note-taking and project management tools, Obsidian and Notion. As you might know, I've always been a big fan of Obsidian because of its incredible markdown editing features, the local file storage and community plugins, but I have to make a confession to you guys because I recently stopped using Obsidian entirely and I've switched to another quite different tool to manage all my notes and projects called Notion. And I thought it might be worth addressing this decision in a video and try to do a fair comparison of these two programs. I'm going to show you some of the pros and cons they have and where they have their limitations. Of course, this video is not sponsored or paid by any of the companies behind Notion or Obsidian. So this is just my own and humble opinion based on my personal experience. So if you are into note taking, tech documentation or managing your home lab projects with some amazing tools and you just want to find out what is the better program for you, this is definitely going to give you the answer. <laughs> That being said, for tracking personal projects and home lab documentation, Notion and Obsidian are both great solutions. We'll dive into some of the details here in a minute. But as IT professionals, you will know that sometimes you just don't have the freedom to choose whatever tool is being used in your company. I bet most of you will be familiar with the business collaboration tool Confluence from Atlassian, which I myself use at work every single day. And to make the most out of Confluence, I want to show you the fantastic content formatting macros made by Collecti, the sponsor of today's video. Because the built-in functions of Confluence are sometimes not the best for creating nice looking and well-structured pages. That's why the content formatting macros of Collecti are a must-have toolkit, which is free for up to 10 users on Confluence Cloud and free for anyone to try for 30 days. It extends the built-in functions of Confluence that most people are missing, allowing you to easily create visually appealing pages with interactive banners, advanced cards, backgrounds or custom buttons. Furthermore, it also allows you to better structure your pages with tabs, expanding sections, numbered headings or a progress bar. And also add additional context elements like tooltips, pop-ups and so on. Trust me, this is really important for companies that use Confluence because it does not just make your pages look better, it also enhances the cross-collaboration between the different teams within your organization so that you all work more effectively together and of course it makes your team stand out from the rest. You can simply start playing around with your numerous templates and create gorgeous collaboration sections or tech documentations in just seconds. Collecti now has a special offering for you. Try the app out using the 30 days free trial and then share a review on the Atlassian Marketplace. For this, you will receive a $20 gift voucher that you can redeem to your choice of retailers like Amazon. So this is really amazing. I can just recommend check it out. Use my link in the description box down below to test the content formatting macros for Confluence and share your review. Okay guys, so let me start this comparison of Obsidian and Notion with a short story. Because if you're following this channel, you might remember that I published two videos about Obsidian in the past, including a tutorial about how to use it for tech documentation, as well as covering some pretty cool community plugins. And I still believe Obsidian is a great program to get that right out the way. So just because I've switched to a different solution, that does not mean it's necessarily a bad program. It has some pretty compelling features, like in my opinion, it is the absolute king when it comes to keeping your notes private, because it uses local files just stored on your hard drive. And because Obsidian uses Markdown files, it is incredible for writing text or documenting software projects. Markdown, by the way, is a standardized language for plain text files that allow you to create formatted text. For example, you can use simple shortcuts for headings, text styles, list elements, which are automatically rendered by Obsidian, but you still have the ability to easily switch between the source format and the rendered view. I believe this is just great for writing tech documents, not only because Markdown is also often used in other technical tools, like when you're writing a readme file on GitHub, it is also done in the Markdown standard, but also because you can simply add code blocks with syntax highlighting directly in your node tool and you can just grab all the files within your vault and move it or import it anywhere else. And this is, in my opinion, a big plus for Obsidian, which still makes it a great choice for technical people that care about having more control over the data. 
Notion, on the other hand, is totally different. It also has a similar editor where you can add style formattings like code blocks and even other elements. It is just as great as it is in Obsidian, maybe even a bit better, because the Notion editor also allows you to add formats that are not supported in Markdown, such as text background or text colors. Notion also works with the same shortcuts used in the Markdown standard, by the way. So when you're familiar with writing Markdown, it just works the same way in Notion, like it does in Obsidian. And it also offers you to export existing notes to Markdown, PDF or HTML. But the biggest difference is between Obsidian and Notion, that Notion does not work with local text files because it has its own format and everything is stored in the cloud. And yes, you already guessed it, you can only use this if you sign up for an account and you have to be always online to access your files. I know this might already be a red flag for some people and if you're looking for a personal and private focused app for note taking, Obsidian is the clear winner, no discussion here. However, if you want to do a fair comparison between Notion and Obsidian, you have to look at other aspects of the program and consider that although they have similarities when it comes to editing files and note taking, they are actually created with a different goal in mind. So they are created for a different type of audience. For example, Obsidian is not just a note-taking app, it's more a second brain type of organizer for your ideas and thoughts. So on their website, the Obsidian team calls this now a flexible writing app that adapts the way you think. So it embraces the concept of organizing your thoughts and ideas into smaller chunks and connecting them with backlinks. Obsidian is also known for its nice looking graph where you can see all the documents as dots and how these documents are really related to each other. The more documents you create and connect, the bigger the map grows. And it's really amazing to keep all your ideas and thoughts organized using these reference links or tags, filters and stuff. But honestly, this is not the way I have used Obsidian because first and foremost, I have used it for writing technical documentation and taking notes for my home lab projects. And my primary goal was to extend Obsidian with some community plugins because I wanted to make this my one and only app for managing all my personal projects. By the way, Obsidian has a huge collection of third-party community plugins that bring new features to this app, like a chat GPT integration or adding quick links and automation Kanban boards and advanced tables. There's even a plugin existing that you can use similar like an SQL query language to build custom databases. It is pretty cool and gives you incredible power to customize Obsidian exactly the way you like. However, you cannot deny the fact that this can be quite complicated and time consuming. So I can't count the hours I played around with all of these plugins, just trying to find out what is the best way to customize my note taking program. And this can be really annoying sometimes, even though as a technical guy, yeah, I just love to tinker. But when you always face problems with these plugins and you want to do your daily work, it can get quite painful. <laughs> Not like a notion, which is created with a different goal in mind. So it's not just about connecting and organizing ideas and thoughts. It is more a simple and intuitive collaborative writing, planning and organizing app. And it aims to replace any other applications like to-do lists, spreadsheets, writing apps, collaboration tools, so that you only need notion and nothing else. On their website, they call it your AI everything app. Because, yeah, every modern app needs to have AI for whatever reason. <laughs> But even when you dislike this approach and you might be worried about privacy and stuff, you have to admit Notion does a pretty good job replacing any other apps because it comes with so many practical and exciting features already built into the app like tables, databases, Kanban boards, calendars, templates, workflow automation, embedding other files from all sorts of applications, creating reminders, tagging other people and that all without unsupported community plugins. It is just greatly built right into this app. And where Obsidian might have its limitations or where it gets a bit complicated with plugins, Notion in most cases already has an easy and straightforward way of doing things. And that is what I personally just like the most about it. I'm barely using any other organizing app for writing text or managing my personal projects or keeping notes. Just to show you a couple of those features and how I'm using this, for example, this here is a Kanban board of my home lab projects. You can see I have grouped those projects in different boxes 
boxes depending on what I want to do with them. And I've added more information about my projects by adding different types of properties like tags, a status, additional text fields, tables for documenting things. And the cool thing is you can add any content like in any other documents to these elements in the Kanban board, just like text, tables, notes, it's all well formatted of course. And the same I'm also doing for all of my video projects, of course. So where I've added each video project into a database, I've added a thumbnail to those elements, the publish date, my scripts and notes. You can even show these entries in a table or in a gallery or link those elements from other documents. I'm also often using the integrated calendar to manage all of my content and to get a better overview when I'm planning new videos. Notion has so many amazing features which are impossible to cover here in a single video. But maybe if you're interested in how exactly I'm using it to manage my projects, then please let me know in the comments down below. I'll give you a deep dive at some point. <laughs> So as a conclusion in terms of features and integrations, Notion is the clear winner, yeah? Even though you might argue, well, Obsidian has community plugins, so in theory, it could do much more because anyone can create new plugins for Obsidian and extend it. But in reality, this d just does not work, yeah? Not all the of these plugins have a great quality. Sometimes these plugins have bugs and you need to fiddle around with them. I'm more excited about well-integrated features instead of relying on unsupported community plugins in Obsidian. At least when it comes to managing my notes and my projects. And what you might not expect from a cloud-based product like Notion is, it has a pretty fair pricing for all of this. Yeah, It has a free tier which gives you a collaborative workspace where you can invite up to 10 guests, have a 7 days page history if you accidentally delete files, and it even integrates with Slack, GitHub and some more. Even though this is quite limited, I have to admit, but it doesn't cost you anything and this is just amazing. If you need more features, of course, you can upgrade to the plus tier, which gives you additional features like unlimited file uploads, a 30 days page history and more guest invites. It also has a business plan, which adds even more features and also an enterprise plan. I'm not going into all of the details here. And if you need AI features, of course, you have to buy an add on for AI. <laughs> But I think this is pretty fair. You get a lot of great features already in the free plan without having to pay anything. And the transparent pricing and features list for any add-ons, I think this is great. Obsidian, on the other hand, has a different pricing model. It is also free, but what most people don't know, only for personal projects. So if you want to use Obsidian for your business, you need to buy a commercial license, which costs $50 per year per user. So if you are a home user, the free version might be totally fine. However, the big difference here is that Obsidian, since it does not have any cloud storage by default, or it does not have any of these collaborative features or synchronization like Notion has in their free plan, this just works with local files. And it's up to you on how to synchronize these files across multiple devices or how to take backups and collaborate with others. If you need those additional features, you have to also buy add-ons like the Obsidian Sync plan, which offers you an end-to-end -end encrypted synchronization between devices and a version history. And if you want to publish your vault to the web, you can also buy Obsidian Publish. And if you're just a single person or maybe two or three people that share the exact same workflow using Obsidian, I think this might be just fine. But if you start working with others where you want to have more flexibility about what exactly you want to share with a team and whatnot. For example, I was planning all of my YouTube videos in Obsidian, which I wanted to share with my video editor and my brand agency so they could see what next project I'm working on, add those to their own planning tools and inspect all the details and so on. And if I would try to do that with Obsidian, so that would mean I'd first have to buy the commercial license because I'm a business and that for free users using a sync license also for each user and create a new separate vault just for the video projects. Because when you're adding team members to Obsidian Sync, everyone has full access to the entire world. Additionally, I also need to tell my video editor and my brand agency that they have to download the Obsidian app for accessing the vault because there is no web version of Obsidian existing and I have no possibility to give someone just read access to it. That just didn't work great for me. 
So in Notion, this is all covered in the free plan. You can invite up to 10 users, just give them read access to, for example, just my video projects and nothing more. And I can just click on share, send these guys the link and that's it. So for me, this is just the better tool. And of course, if you want to use Notion in a team or work together on documents, it allows you to tag people in certain documents or set up reminders. It is a real collaboration tool, much more than Obsidian is. But let's be fair, Notion is not perfect. And I'm not saying just because I've switched from Obsidian to Notion, you have to do the same. I know the lack of a local private file storage could be a deal breaker for so many people. That's totally fine. I'm also sometimes missing the flexibility and tinkering with community plugins. I just like to do that. I believe for people that want to have more control of their app and their files, Obsidian is the way to go. But for people like me that just want to be productive and have a simple and straightforward app that has many advanced features and share their projects with others, then just use Notion. That's it from my side. Please let me know what do you think about Notion and Obsidian or maybe you're using a completely different tool leave a comment below. And a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. You guys are really the best. And of course, a thanks goes out to everyone for watching. I hope it was helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.